This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about how Bitcoin Knots just keeps winning. We have Bitcoin Core, we have Bitcoin Knots. These are two different software implementations of the Bitcoin consensus rules. And this software, these different versions of software are run by sovereign Bitcoiners who want to run their own Bitcoin nodes so that they don't need to trust nodes run by big companies that may not have their best interests at heart. And lots of Bitcoiners have been losing faith as well in the Bitcoin Core developers and in the Bitcoin Core software, as you can learn more about in this video, which I'll link to in the description notes below. So a lot of Bitcoin node runners are switching from Bitcoin Core to Bitcoin Knots. And this is the real news today, the Bitcoin Knots nodes are now over 12% of the network. We can see Bitcoin Knots nodes just going completely vertical here. According to this scanner, there are approximately 2,640 Bitcoin Knots nodes. We're going to see how that compares to other scanners. But if we take a look here, and uh, it looks like they're correcting to emit duplicate and non-listening nodes, we can see Bitcoin Knots nodes are 12.3 12.32% uh, of the entire network, which is unbelievable. As Shire Hoddle points out here, for context, that number was 3% at the start of April. So we're now over 12%. And just a couple months ago, that was at 3% and there are only 674 Bitcoin Knots nodes. If we take a look at Clark Moody's Bitcoin dashboard, we can see the different versions of software that node runners are running. And now Bitcoin Knots is number three just under core Bitcoin Core version 29 and Bitcoin Core version 28.1. And I believe that Knots is actually a fork of core 28.1 with Luke's added filters. So this says that there are 2,480 Bitcoin Knots nodes. That's 11.35% of the network. And again, I believe Clark Moody is only uh, referring to listening nodes. We're going to talk about that in a moment. I like Alan B. Watts's prediction here. Prediction knots will outpace Core 30. This is the newest version of Bitcoin Core software that is expected to come out in October. And Watts here is predicting that knots will outpace it. It's already surpassed as we saw all, all other core versions except 28.1 and 29. And then we have Luke Dasher scanner here, which is quite interesting because it takes into account not just listening nodes, but also non-listening nodes. And he's showing over 80,000, 80,387 Bitcoin Core nodes. In other words, nodes running the Bitcoin Core software and then 8,016 nodes running the Bitcoin Knots software. There is a delay as I understand it to this. So these are stale numbers, but we can see how much Bitcoin Knots is still. It's still about 10%, 9, 10% of the network according to this. And I believe this scanner will catch up in the coming weeks. Let's talk a little bit about this difference between listening nodes and non-listening nodes. First of all, non-listening node, it's a node that doesn't accept in incoming connections, does not accept incoming connections from other nodes. It only initiates outgoing connections to other nodes. Now, non-listening nodes, they still validate all transactions and blocks, and they can be used to broadcast your own Bitcoin transactions to the network. So it might make sense to run a non-listening node. For example, if your node hardware is holder, is, is older and cannot handle as much activity. If you look inside of core or knots, there's a setting. This would be the setting listen equals zero. I'm going to show you how to check this on start nine and umbral as well. So that's non-listening nodes. They do not accept incoming connections from other nodes. A listening node, as you would expect, is the exact opposite. It does. These do accept incoming connections from other nodes. And in this case, you have to have listen set to one. And then you also need to have port 8333 open on your router. A lot of people in the comment section have been asking me to point this out. So I thank you for that. If you want to know whether your port, this port 8333 is open, there are a couple ways to check, which I'm going to show you. One thing you can do is you can Google your ISP, the name of your ISP, whether it's Comcast or Spectrum or one of these, and then you can Google port 8333 to get more information. If you don't have this port open on your router, your node will not count towards towards those node totals on Clark Moody's dashboard or Coindance we've, that we've been looking at because those services only count listening nodes, though it will show up, I believe, on Luke Dasher's because he does count non-listening nodes as well. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'd pause very briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend 
or family member. In the past, we've talked about this as an attack vector, port 8333. Governments could try to force internet service providers, ISPs, to close this port and try to stop Bitcoin traffic in that way. But that would require global coordination from all the different governments in order to really shut it down globally and for it to work well as a measure. And the other thing, the other reason they're probably not going to do this, this would mess up other applications that use port that use port 8333. And then when you have governments running nodes themselves, as the US government presumably is doing now, then this would be another reason for governments not to mess with these ports. But in a worst case scenario, Bitcoin node software could be rewritten to use a different port in the router. So this isn't a real attack vector. I'll put a link to this as well from the Bitcoin wiki talking about network services and listening nodes. I wanted to look at this briefly. Full nodes may provide various services to other network participants if the software is run with listen equals one, as is the default, as we said. This is especially important for lightweight nodes. These services that these full nodes provide include filtering transactions and blocks on behalf of lightweight nodes so that lightweight nodes do not need to download every transaction ever made on the network in order to find their own transactions. This would be prune nodes. Serving historical full blocks to nodes that have been off offline for a while. Transmitting new transactions from users to miners. Broadcasting new blocks from miners to other nodes. For the most part, these services are only usefully, usefully performed by full nodes that are listening on port 8333. The more full nodes that accept incoming connections there are, the more users the Bitcoin network can support. So this is why port 8333 is so important and also why it's important to run your software as a listening node. As Sat Scholar, Sat Staddy points out here, please remember that to do the most if you're on the side of Bitcoin as a monetary network, then when running knots open port 8333 in your router, you can find this in the port forwarding section of the router. Not all ISPs allow this by default. So if yours doesn't, just give them a call. Many will switch you to static IP for free or a low cost and or open your account for port forwarding. This turns your node into a listening node and will allow it to accept inbound connections and show up in the node count as reachable. So if you're running Bitcoin knots, it's important to try to do this as possible. You can also check to see if your port is open. I'm not going to do it right here because I don't want to leak my IP address to everyone on this video, but you can basically copy and paste your IP address, whether it's IPv4 or IPv6 or an onion address. And then this has 8333 here. You can check node and that will tell you uh, if you're, if at least BitNodes is able to spot your node. And this will give you a good indication of whether your port 8333 is open. There's another service that does this as well, which I didn't want to have typed in because it does show your IP address as soon as you do it. This is yougetsignal.com slash tool slash open dash ports. The thing to understand, you are possibly leaking privacy by using these websites and putting in your IP address and checking to see if you have a node. I don't think this is a huge risk, but people could correlate it with other information. Uh, once you know someone's IP address, you can pretty much figure out their location. And then you can, uh, if you know that they're running a node, they probably have Bitcoin, et cetera. So that's the only problem with using these. There's another, another way to check on it if you're using Start9 or Umbral. I'll show you inside my Start9 services how I do it. I go inside of Bitcoin Knots, and then you scroll down here to Properties. And then down here, we can see connections. And I have 14 connections coming in, 10 going out. So I'm clearly allowing incoming connections. This implies that my port 8333 is open and that I have listen set to one, which is the default. So if you have any incoming connections, as I understand it, that means your port is open and you are running a listening node. And then on Umbral, it looks like it shows up like this. I'm not currently running Umbral, though I used to, you can see your connections here under Bitcoin Core or Bitcoin Knots, and you can see how many peers you have. And if you have any incoming connections, that would imply, at least to me, that your port 8333 is open. So those are two, two different ways to check. If you'd like to learn how to run a Bitcoin Knots node, I'll put a link to this video in the description notes below, as well as all the data, all the links and resources in the description notes right here, which can teach you how to switch from Bitcoin Core to Bitcoin Knots if you're already running Bitcoin Core, or if you want to start fresh with a Bitcoin Knots installation, how to do it on a laptop or a desktop or a personal server like Start9 or Umbral. And I'll also link to this that teaches you how to run it virtually in a virtual machine on your existing computer, how to run Start9 operating system, which you can then use to install all these really, really cool apps, one of which is Bitcoin 
not. So I'll put a link to all those in the description notes below. Some people have been asking me if they should just keep running old versions of Bitcoin Core software. After six to 12 months of time have elapsed since the latest versions of Bitcoin Core have been released, you probably shouldn't be running older versions of Bitcoin Core software, certainly not past, call it 24 months, or you're leaving yourself open to attacks due to vulnerabilities that have been patched in later versions of Bitcoin Core. I believe that the latest version, as I said earlier, the latest version of Bitcoin Knots is a fork of Bitcoin Core 28.1, but it does have patches that Luke has put in, Luke Dasher has put in, and also much better filters than Bitcoin Core has in order to stop the spam. Very important to notice, running Bitcoin Core, I'm sorry, running Bitcoin Knots will not cause a chain split or a fork. We're not trying to fork the network, obviously. Bitcoin knots can do nothing about blocks that already have spam in them, but it can help you to stop inadvertently helping crypto VCs and other scammers by relaying their spam garbage and putting this unnecessary burden on node runners who don't benefit from spam or non-monetary data on Bitcoin. As I said before, Bitcoin knots is basically Bitcoin core that's been forked. It's the same software, the same implementation. And then Luke Dasher added some filters and also added better default settings to stop spam. And he added patches as well, as well as more user configurability, which is really important to keep in mind. You can actually run Bitcoin knots and you can allow extra spam to be relayed if you want to, because Luke Dasher and Bitcoin knots, unlike Bitcoin core devs, Luke believes that your mempool is actually your sovereign mempool. This is where you store unconfirmed transactions that can be sent to other nodes and relayed to miners as well. Luke believes, as do I, that your mempool is actually yours. It's your sovereign mempool. And neither Bitcoin Core devs nor anyone else in Core should be meddling with it. As Bitcoin Kami says here, the idea that you don't get to decide what goes in your own node's mempool is a full-blown attack on decentralization. I wish more Bitcoin Core devs would understand this. If you want to read more about Luke Dasher and how he saved Bitcoin multiple times, Jack Dorsey calls him Bitcoin's guardian angel, and he's been a Bitcoin software developer since Bitcoin was 30 cents. I'll put a link to this in the description notes below to give you more of a feel for Luke Dasher. We're also expecting, we've had a couple devs come over to Bitcoin Knots, and we're expecting there to be a flood. There'll be more funding. There'll be more devs on the Bitcoin Knots side. And then I would also expect other implementations of the Bitcoin consensus rules, other Bitcoin clients to also pop up in the coming months and years as Bitcoin Core continues to lose its monopoly, which is a really good thing because what's happening here is Bitcoin is becoming more decentralized as it becomes less reliant on just a certain number of Bitcoin Core devs who apparently at least now seem to have a very bad view of spam and believe that it belongs on the Bitcoin network, which it clearly doesn't. And this goes against all Bitcoin culture and Bitcoin history because spam has never been welcomed on the Bitcoin network. So yet another reason to run Bitcoin knots, take back control, take back control of your mempool and tell Bitcoin core devs what you really think of them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.